Hello, in this video we're going to continue talking about Fourier series. So, previously we had seen that we're able to calculate all these coefficients analytically and then compute the sum. But what happens when we're trying to approximate a function such as the function multiplies by a cosinus is not n integrable. Like, we cannot find a previously known function that suits the, the that is the um, result of this integration. Like for example, if you try to compute the integral of exponential of minus x squared times cosine of x, you're gonna have a pretty nasty function that the computer doesn't like to handle. So it's gonna give you an error. So it's not gonna be able to analytically calculate this expression and evaluate it. So what are we going to do next? We can approximate the value of, a f of our integral using numerical methods. Why can we do this? Because the integral is a defined integral. It has upper, lower and upper limits. So this result is going to be a real number only if we know which n are we integrating because this function f times cosinus is a function of x and also a function of n because later on we're going to do the sum over from n equals 1 to n equals a maximum value so we need to have a function of one variable to get the numerical value so what we're going to do is that we're going to sum the, the n's first and then we're going to do n integrations so we're going to substitute n with 1 we're going to integrate then we're going to substitute n with 2 we're going to integrate and so on until we reach our maximum value so we need to integrate numerically so we need to give our integrating function like all these x values and then all these y values so we can do the approximation with trapezoids. So how can we do this in MATLAB? We're going to use the function traps that you give the matrix x with the points on the x axis and a matrix y with the points on the the points that are the results of her the points that mean the function so is gonna give you back the result of the integration so let's see what our code code looks like so the beginning of the code is the same you get a, a period you get a beginning you get the maximum value and then you get the function we're gonna define our function x is gonna be the function of from the beginning to the end of our approximation and we're going to take really small steps our step is 0 0.01 then we're going to convert our function f into a handle function a function handle why we want to do this because after when we have a function handle we can evaluate a function handle and we can give it as input all our values in x and it's going to give us the value of a function in x1, 1, 1, 2, 3, until we reach to the end. And we're going to give this matrix x and this matrix y as input for a function traps, which is going to calculate the integral of our function from the beginning to a period plus the beginning. And then we have to define what we want to integrate. We agree that we want to integrate f times cosinus of 2 pi times n times x over t and f the same with the sinus. We have to do the and uh, to define a um, symbolic vector full of cosinus and full of sinus and uh, we have to pre-allocate memory for a n and b n which are going to be our coefficients so what's the difference here because here we're gonna s we're starting the sum but we haven't integrated 
because we're going to integrate as we s do the sum. That might s sound weird, but that's the only way to do it because we cannot integrate analytically and then substitute the n in our analytic result. So we have to sum and integrate numerically as we go. So how do we integrate numerically? So we're just going to define, we're going to convert. So here we're going to substitute n with the value of n that we want to integrate the function with. Let's say we're going to begin with 1. So this is basically doing the sum. This is basically substituting n here and n there. So we're going to have a function of one variable that we're going to call it v int and w, w int. And we're going to convert it to function handle. Then that function, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to evaluate that function in all our values of x. And then we are going to integrate it for sinus and cosine is the same thing. And we're going to put it in a vector. This is a vector containing all our coefficients. And we're going to define another vector containing all of our sinus and cosinus. So what we're going to have is basically a vector containing this coefficient a vector containing all these cosinus, a vector containing all these coefficients, and a vector containing all these sinus. And after, we just have to do the, the dot product, a vector times a vector transpose plus the vector sinus times the coefficients transpose, and then plus the a0 term, and then we have our um, approximation and then we're going to graph it I'm going to define a certain number of points which is proportional to the step I'm taking because if I take a bigger step and I use a lot of points it's not worth it and if I take a very small step but I don't do the graph with many points then it's not going to be accurate so this is a good way to prevent that. And then we're just going to plot the two functions. So let's just give it a try. We want to integrate, let's say, exponential of um, exponential of minus x minus x squared from, uh, from 1 to 1. So a period is 2 and the beginning is 1. So I'm going to approximate this function from one from minus 1 to 1. And this was the degree of approximation. So we're going to approximate it with 10 cosinus and sinus. And then we're going to use the function. Um, OK. So calculated them a0 term and here is telling me that it's doing numerical approximations and here's the graph so the code is slow a little bit because it has to do numerical integration 20 times for a max for a 10 degrees of approximation and it's not very efficient but that's the only way that you can get the approximation and you see that it's very reliable but what happens let's launch it again what happens if I choose a function let's say sinus of x from minus, from minus 1 to 1 and 10 let's say sinus of x divided by x so here the um, the numerical in, in the this function is going to replace at some point is going to is going to substitute zero here and the program doesn't know how to handle with that so so it's going to give me an error see 
is gonna give me that the integral is not a number which is false which is false but that's what he believes because if you let's use PML, if you say I'm gonna define the function let's say function is equal to sinus of x that's x and then I say substitute f in f the value of x by zero is gonna give me oh that's not a number but if I say limit of f when x goes to zero is gonna give me one so how do I handle with that how do I handle that well I the problem is that in the vector y we're gonna have one value or at least one value that is not a number or infinity so we're gonna have to look if there's one value like that and then we're gonna use the limit to let's see to see if it is fixable with the limit and if it's not fixable with the limit then it means that it's not a continuous function and if it's not a f continuous function our program cannot approximate it so I wrote a code that is a little long and it's a little hard to explain but I'll put it in the description of the video and it takes care of that problem um, I'll put both codes in the description of the video so you can check it out and try to understand how like I use the function find and is none and is infinity to, to check if the function evaluating that interval had any weird values so i'll post both of these codes on the description and thank you thank you very much for watching see you next time